Model engineering for beginners, part 44. The basic principles of using a die holder for threading brass parts in the lathe chuck. The image on screen shows a tailstock die holder and these are very useful things to have. One of the parts has a Morse number 2 taper that goes into the quill of the tailstock and the other part of it is parallel which guides the tailstock die holder as it slides back and forth during the threading process. You don't have to use a tailstock die holder to do this. You can just as easily use a standard die holder and then use the tailstock quill to keep it parallel to the work. The process of threading using a die is very common, but it's not quite as simple as it first appears. It's really important to make sure that the thread that you cut is the right size. This is a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die, but can you see the slot in the die? This is to make the die adjustable. The die is going to be somewhere near the thread that you need without adjusting it, but you would be surprised how much of a difference it makes if you do the job properly. The die was currently fitted in this die holder very gently, and currently the adjusting screws are doing nothing but holding the die in place. I'm checking the setting of the die by using a commercial steam fitting, and this tells me that the die is too tight so therefore, when I cut a thread with it, the thread is not going to be accurate. With the brass fitting screwed into the die as far as it will go, I'm using an Allen key to loosen the three Allen grub screws. The middle grub screw comes to a point internally, and as you tighten it, it expands the die, it opens it a bit. But I must stress that you need to slacken off the two outer grub screws first. With the centre grub screw now tightened, the die has been expanded and the part screws in and out very easily. All I have to do now is gently tighten the two outer grub screws which hold the die in place. Before starting the job, it's very important to make sure that the die is clean, and that way you're more likely to get a clean thread. If any of these four holes around the die are full of swarf, this will damage the thread. I get a lot of messages on a daily basis from viewers either telling me how to do the job, telling me I'm doing it wrong, or suggesting different and somewhat novel ways of doing the same job. One viewer was telling me he normally puts his die in the three-jaw chuck like this. I cannot recommend this method of thread cutting. In principle, it does work. You put the die in the three-jaw chuck and hold your material in the tailstock chuck and off you go. The problem arises when you tighten the chuck jaws because this closes the die and it doesn't matter where you put the die in the chuck, it still does the same thing. So yes it works, but you will always cut an undersized thread. That is the reason why commercial die holders have three adjustment points. The two outer grub screws close the die and the centre grub screw which has a taper point on it opens the die a small amount. Using this principle, you are at risk of fracturing the die because these dies don't bend very much at all. And to be honest, as a beginner many years ago, I have done this, and as a beginner many years ago, I've broken a few dies. There are different ways of threading in the lathe. You can use the gearbox and actually screw cut, which I never really did. Well, only once, and it turned out like a strand of DNA, so I gave it up as a bad job. You can also use things called Coventry die boxes. But most people, like myself, use commercial dies like this one. In this clip, I've changed the position of the die so that the chuck jaw is on the part that spreads. But the same thing still happens. When you tighten up the jaws of the chuck, the die gets smaller. For this demonstration, I've fitted a piece of brass hexagon into the three-jaw chuck. Here it is. On most occasions, brass is a very easy metal to work with, but you do need a sharp cutting tool. One of my regular viewers wrote in and asked, how do you know when your carbide tip is blunt and needs changing? This particular carbide tip isn't all that sharp, really. It's one I use for a variety of jobs, and I'm going to use it in this demonstration. The first thing to do is to touch the tip with your finger, very gently, and see how sharp it feels. And this doesn't feel very sharp. 
A better way of doing it, far more scientific, is to use one of these eyepieces. This is what the camera sees looking through the eyepiece. The end is quite pointy, it's not broken, but it's not very sharp. But it's sharp enough for this demonstration. There are other indications that the tool may be blunt. For instance, you probably won't get a good finish on the work, and if the tool is very blunt, you'll be able to feel it because you have to put a lot more pressure on to make the cut. This clip shows me using the magnifier to look at the condition of a brand new carbide tip. And also, it definitely feels sharper than the one that's in my tool holder. With this tool fitted to the tool post, here it is in action, cutting the brass. And it does so very well. The only thing I can see is it's a bit raggy where it meets the hexagon part. When I stop the lathe, you can see this more clearly. It's not a big problem though, it cleans off with a bit of wet or dry sandpaper. It's top tip time, and this is a good one. Generally speaking, I initially set my micrometers using a twist drill shank. And I've always done it this way ever since I was a raw beginner. The problem is that the shank of a twist drill is not always the correct size. Before using the micrometer, I verify the setting by looking at the numbers. This is a very simple explanation because I'm a very simple man. 5 sixteenths of an inch converts to 3.125. So I wind out the micrometer to the 3 position, then I move the vernier from 0 to the 12.5 position. And this is a setting I'm going to go with, a tiny bit bigger than 5 sixteenths of an inch. What I need to do now is take some sample cuts on the end of the piece of brass and then check them with the micrometer. When the micrometer fits on the piece of brass, I continue the cut all the way down. How am I doing the imperial to decimal conversion? Well, it's really simple. All the popular sizes are printed on the micrometer's handle. Here I'm cutting all the way down to the correct length, which is a straight copy of the commercial fitting. Just to double check, yes, this is definitely the size that I need. I'm making a steam fitting, although I'm only making a sort of test steam fitting. But as part of the process, it would be at this stage where I centre drilled the end. Then I would fit the tailstock die holder into the tailstock and start the job. I'm doing it by hand, and periodically I reverse the rotation of the work just to clear the swarf. Brass swarf comes off as very small chippings, and you have to be careful these are very sharp and they stick in your fingers very easily. Why don't I wear gloves in the workshop? Well, because I think it's dangerous. I like to know where my fingers are at all times. Once I cut the thread, I use the paintbrush to clean off the swarf. And after cleaning it, I can now screw on the commercial union nut, which starts off OK but tightens up slightly. Generally speaking, this means that the die is not closed sufficiently. And here, by making minute adjustments, I'm rectifying that. Once I'd made this setting adjustment, I repeated the process and recut the thread. This clip shows me rotating the chuck in reverse because I've finished the cut and I'm just removing the die holder. And once again, before attempting to fit the union nut, I'm getting rid of all of the swarf. Now the union nut is a perfect fit, and it really is perfect, no shake, rattle or roll. That of course was a musical term. What I meant to say was, there is no play on the thread. It's not tight, and neither is it slack. Here's a comparison between a commercial part and the one I made after I cleaned it up on some wet or dry sandpaper. The process of cutting threads using a tailstock die holder in the lathe is very different relative to the metal that you're cutting. I'll show this in a bit more detail in the next episode, but that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.